Hello and happy, happy Wednesday evening. I'm John Shu and I'm the ambassador of school libraries for Scholastic Book Fairs. And welcome to the Scholastic Parents Night, the power of summer reading, something we know that's on your minds right now. A huge thank you to everyone who's joining us out there in Facebook land and to all of the wonderful panelists, Varian, Kelly, Lizette, and Lauren, who I will introduce shortly. Thank you to Save the Children, Scholastic summer reading partner and all the independent bookshops for co-hosting this wonderful event tonight. Please be sure to visit your local participating independent bookshop to purchase books. If you feel inspired tonight to share something on social media, please use the hashtag Scholastic Parents Night, tag your local independent bookshop, and at Scholastic on Twitter, and at Scholastic Inc. on Instagram. And please, please, please share your comments and ask questions throughout the event, and we will be sure to answer as many questions as we can later tonight. So let's get started by bringing Varian Johnson to the virtual stage. Varian Johnson, the author of The Great Green Heist, the author of The Parker Inheritance, the author of Twins, which I have been lucky enough to book talk about 300 times over the past year. And this book variant just came in the mail yesterday. I've not read it yet, playing the cards you're dealt, and I cannot wait to read this over the weekend. So Varian, I'm gonna pass it over to you right now. Uh, thanks so much, John. I'm so happy to be here talking about summer reading. I grew up in South Carolina near the coast. So every summer, my family would drive down to the beach for a day, maybe two days if we were lucky. And, you know, I certainly loved, you know, splashing around in the ocean, building sand castles, eating ice cream, playing with my brother and my sister. But I also loved the trip there because we would get all this reading done. Before the trip, my mom would take us to the library and we would get this huge stack of books, this huge haul. And we would read all the way to the beach. We would read while there, while either on the beach or maybe in the car. And then we would even read on the way back in the dead of night. And I remember um, sometimes trying to hold a book up high enough to catch the beams from the cars behind me while I just tried to get a few more pages in before my parents would tell me to stop. Uh, of course, summer reading isn't uh, books. You don't have to just read them just during the summer. You can read books anytime. Um, but summer is a really, really special time to do that because you can try lots of different types of books as well, too. It's, it's a, a season to experiment. Um, it was during the summer where I discovered many of my favorite books. And I was transported to new worlds like Narnia in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. or um, I. I, I felt and discovered superheroes and how to be brave and heroic from some of my favorite X-Men and Batman comic books. And also during the summer, I used books to connect to other characters, other kids like me, quiet, bookish, inquisitive kids like uh, Lois Lowry's Anastasia Krupnik or Margaret Simon from Judy Bloom's Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. I read all sorts of books during the summer. Any book, I, let me stress this again, any book is a good summer book. Um, whether it's something um, funny and heartfelt like Twins, which is my first graphic novel illustrated by Shannon Wright, which came out last year, about twin sisters Maureen and Francine who are trying to navigate their friendship, their sisterhood, now that they're in middle school and want different things. Um, great summer reads can also be kind of heavier, weightier, like something like a good heavy mystery, uh, something that, that spurs good conversation, good family conversation, like the Parker Inheritance, which is about a girl named Candace who is living in a small town for the summer. She discovers a letter which speaks about a great injustice that happened in her small town where a black family was run out of town just because of who they were, uh, the color of the skin, who they wanted to be. Uh, the letter also promises uh, a fortune, a mystery, an inheritance. And so Candace and Brandon go about trying to solve this puzzle, this mystery, hinted at in the letter, uh, and all that comes together in the Parker Inheritance where we see both characters in contemporary time, and then we flash back as well too. Uh, and I'll just add, 
if anyone out there wants to hear me talk more about books, books that I loved as a kid, books that um, some of my favorite books now, books I've written before, even books like my newest one called Playing the Cartridge Dealt, which comes out in October. I'm going to be in the Summer Reading Zone on home base on June 3rd. So be sure to check that out and we can talk books. I love, love, love talking books, whether it's the summertime or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Varian. I could I could imagine you in the back seat of your parent's car holding up the book to the light. I love that visual. And yeah. I imagine that in the back seat was your twin brother with you as well? He was on one side. My sister was on the other. If we were lucky, we can get her to sit in the middle. Um, but, you know, we always had to try to draw lines to have space between us. Uh, but we were all reading, me, my brother, and my sister, and we would swap books all the time as well, too. I'm so envious of you because I'm someone who gets car sick if I try reading Ooh. in the car. So, like, I was a kid, like, if I tried to read in the car, especially in the summer, I would throw up. So it's something I've never been able to do, unfortunately, Varian. But I have a question for you, and sure. it's coming from Victoria in Garden Grove. And okay. she wants to know if you've based many of your books from your own life experiences. So how does the life of Varian influence the books that Varian writes? Oh, great question. Victoria from, from Victoria? Uh, Garden right? Grove. Yeah, Victoria, Garden Grove. Garden Grove. Yeah, Victoria. Um, yeah I, I think almost every book I write, there's a piece of me in there. And often I will mine my past to influence a book. Um, twins. I'm a twin. Um, now, I didn't run against my brother for sixth grade class president like the girls do in this book. But my brother and I were placed in separate classes in middle school. And while he thrived and loved being in separate classes, I really, really struggled with it. Um, and then, yeah, Playing the Cards You're Dealt, which is my book coming out, is all set in the community, which is all based on the community I grew up with, grew up in as a child. And it's all about the game of spades, which I learned as a kid, and which I love, love, love so much. I love mm -hmm. that I get to geek out about spades in this book. Awesome. So yes, you know, I love rounds of applause. So Varian, I'm giving you a huge, huge round of applause. And I will see you later on this evening during the Q&A. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Varian. Next, I get to bring Kelly Yang to the virtual stage. Kelly Yang, the author of Front Desk and the author of Three Keys. And Kelly, you already saw this on Twitter, but yesterday, look what I received in the mail. Yay! I received a copy of Room to Dream, which I cannot wait to read. I have two wonderful, wonderful books to read this weekend. So I'm gonna pass it over to you now, Kelly Yang. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am a huge, huge fan of summer reading. Some of my earliest summer memories as a kid was sitting at the front desk of the motel that my parents helped manage and clean all the rooms and devouring books, you know, because growing up, we didn't have a lot of money and we could not go on a summer vacation. You know, all my classmates would be going off to New York and to Disney World in Florida. And we couldn't even go to Disneyland, which was like five minutes away from where I lived. Instead, I got to go on vacation through books. I would go to my local library and I would borrow loads and loads of books. And through these books, I would be transported to different parts of the world, to different times in history. And it was so exciting to jump into a book and go on vacation with my favorite characters, which is why I'm super, super excited and proud of Room to Dream, which is the latest book in the Front Desk series, in which Mia finally gets to go on vacation. And she goes on vacation all the way across the world to China. You know, after years of hard work, Mia and her parents and Hank finally get to go on vacation, and Mia is reunited with her cousins. It's an exciting and exhilarating, fun book based of, off of my real experiences and my real memories exploring China during that special time when China was right on the cusp of modernizing. And all the emotions of being reunited with family after you haven't seen them for, for a really long time. And of course, you're so worried, you know, are, are they going to be different? Do they still miss you? Do they have all this fun without you? Um, it's just a really heartwarming, you know, a lot of like heartwarming emotions 
are in these pages. And I can't wait for you guys to read it. I know that after the year we've had, I sure can use a vacation. And there's no greater joy than going on vacation with your favorite characters. And the other great thing about summer reading is not only does it make you a better reader, it also feeds your imagination and your creativity as a writer. Um, and I was a writing teacher for 15 years before I became an author. And I always tell kids this, you know, writing is a sport and we have to take it seriously like a sport and we have to practice our sport to build up that muscle. So really great thing over the summer, in addition to reading for kids to keep a journal, you know, they can start a blog in Room to Dream. Mia actually starts writing a column for a middle grade newspaper. And you'll see from her columns that they don't have to be about anything super important. They don't have to be, you know, these amazing interviews. They can just be about kids' everyday lives. That's what I wrote as a kid. So I highly encourage all kids to read, read, read. You cannot be a good writer without reading and write, 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 you know, and really journey through these beautiful books. Um, and if you really, if you are able to take a real vacation, write about it, you know, document those memories because they're so beautiful and they're so important. And you never know, you might one day grow up to write a series based on your life. Um, so I'm really excited to um, connect with you guys. We just had an amazing event on home base and it was so much fun to guide kids through um, writing activities and help them discover the love of reading. I'm muted. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Kelly Yang. I, I love um, that you talked about writing because the question I was going to ask you came from Donna and it's what would you say to a child who wants to be a writer? And you really, you, you addressed that when you were talking. So I'm gonna ask you a different question than Kelly, which is what are some ways that you, as, as a mom, that you encourage your, your own personal children to read during the summertime? I mean, the most important thing I think is to get kids books that they love. Um, we don't have to judge what they read. You know, my kids love reading graphic novels. They love reading comic books. They love reading silly books. They love reading funny books. And all of that is okay. Me as a mom, I just want them to read. It doesn't matter what they're reading. As long as they've got their nose in a book and they're thinking and that's activating their imagination, their creativity, they're getting something out of it. And that's what's so beautiful. You, I always tell kids this, you don't have to be the best reader, but you do have to be a, a big reader. And that's what I was. I was always a big reader. I wasn't always the best reader and that's okay. Yay! That was the that was the perfect perfect response, Kelly Yang. Thank you so much for being here today, and I cannot wait to read Room to Dream over the weekend. And later, you will be back to answer some questions from the audience. So thank you, thank you, Kelly Yang. All right, our next guest is Lizette Serrano, and Lizette, hi there, Lizette. Lizette's responsible often for mailing me all of these books, so thank you, Lizette. So Lizette. Lizette is the Vice President of Educational Marketing at Scholastic. She's the co-founder of the Power of Story Initiative, and she is a 2021 Summer Reading Ambassador. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Lizette. Oh, I think you're, you're muted. Lizette, you're you're on mute, Lizette. So sorry, guys. Tech, we are live. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say you're Please you're start. muted. <laughs> you're muted. Right, start over. Start over. <laughs> okay, this is real life. Um, I was just saying, you know, I was talking about summer reading. That summer is about recharging, having fun, making memories with friends and family. And the Scholastic Summer Reading Program creates that emotional experience through amazing stories. So now through September 3rd, kids can join this classic reading program by creating a free account on Scholastic Home Base. What's that, John? What's Scholastic Home Base? Scholastic Home Base is a safe, <laughs> free 3D interactive world dedicated to keeping kids connected to stories through book-based programs, live author events, and a large community of readers. It is so cool. Um, so when kids create an account, here's what they're able to get. They can read free books. They can chat about them with their friends or family. 
they can attend again virtual author events with our amazing authors. Kelly just said she had one recently. Um, the amazing author, Christina Sernturvat, is tomorrow, and Varian, I think, is also next Thursday. So definitely go check out the full schedule for the rest of the summer. Um, you know, it's so cool. When I went to school, I didn't have all this visit my school, so I love I love that kids have the artist opportunity to meet their favorite authors and create their favorite, see their avatars play out through home base. So I really love that about that, about this program. But I kept the best part for last. Um, so kids will be able to track um, their reading summer by maintaining a reading streak in home base. The longer a child extends their reading streak, the more digital experiences they earn. So by keeping reading streaks, kids will be able to unlock a donation of 100,000 books from Scholastic. It's amazing. Which will be distributed by Save the Children to kids across rural America with limited or no access to reading materials. I mean, how wonderful is that to empower kids to make a difference? That's just, you know, just a, a great way, again, to make that connection with summer and reading. I'm, I'm muted now. <laughs> Perfect. And it was so funny. Like I was trying to reach out and help you. I was like, you're muted. But th that was fantastic. So Lizette, I'm going to ask you a very similar question to what I asked Kelly, which is what are your tips for family members, for parents uh, during the summertime as it, as it uh, pertains to reading? I love this question. I'm a mom of two teenage boys. Um, I also have little nephews. One is seven, one is three. And when I have, what I've had, what I've unlocked recently, which is a great um, tip to give parents and gay, uh, caregivers is that encouraging your kids to, whatever, not, no matter what age, to encourage them to read to their cousins, their, their siblings, to their, you know, um, it creates this great social activity of bonding. So that's my tip. Take either, if they're older, share a picture book that they enjoyed growing up with their um, nephew. My my oldest shared How Did a Dinosaur Say Goodnight with my little uh, three-year-old who's obsessed with dinosaurs. So that was a perfect book match. Um, so that's my tip. You know, create a bonding experience through bringing the family together through a through connection through a book or story. That's perfect, perfect advice. And now we're going to we're going to bring Varian back, and we're going to bring Kelly back. <laughs> Yay! I'm so happy to be with all of you today. And and I know that we've all been together at reading summits and conferences. And my day is always brighter when I get to celebrate books with all of you. So I have a question, and and you can all answer, or one of you can answer. I'd love to know what is a graphic novel that you are really, really excited about, and you're not allowed to say twins <laughs> but twins is one that everyone should say so who would like to share a graphic novel you're excited about right now i'm gonna go first awesome. um and it is allergic it is Ooh. i hope you guys can see this by megan wagner lloyd and michelle uh me nutter it is about this girl who wants a dog a pet so badly but she happens to be allergic to almost any type of pet out there, any type of pet with fur. So she has this list she goes through, she does all this research, but it's about friendships as well. Um, it's got this great cast of characters in it, these great dynamic creators behind it. Um, allergic just came out this summer and it's such a, such, such great book. It's so great. I have two copies of the Uncorrected Proof and I bought two actual copies for myself because I love it so much. That's yeah, awesome. I agree. That's the one I was going to talk about. I was like, okay, but I'm so glad you did. Like, I, I love so many things about this book, Varian. I love that, you know, in addition to being about allergies, and I can't think of any other children's book that's that's all about allergies. It's about family. It's about friendship. It's the perfect package. And is what I always say, Varian, during recent school visits, if you love twins, I think you'll also love allergic. So thank you for talking about allergic. Lizette or Kelly, do you have a graphic yes, novel? I am so excited about Picasso, another dog oh. book. It's a graphic novel that just came out by Remy Lai, who's one of my favorite authors. She wrote Pie in the Sky and Fly on the Wall. Um, and this is such a cute book. It's so sweet. It's about this dog and he can go shopping. He can wear like a basket and go shopping and this kid sees him and of course all this stuff happens um but you know she's just an amazing author and just such a brilliant artist as well um so i'm really excited for everyone to check out this new book that just came out picasso 
I agree. I did the cover reveal for that book. And oh, in the interview, I confess that I stole a dog when I was in the second grade. But that, that, that is for a different time. So Lizette, do you have a graphic novel that you're really excited about right now? I'm excited about Kelly's recommendation. I've been seeing that um, circulating. And that, that title is just so much fun. What a great title to get kids engaged. Um, I will talk about a graphic novel to get introduce kids to the graphic novel format. I love the new series by Jess Keating, um, Bon Bon and Bon Bon. It's just so cute. Look at look at the white fluffy bunny with a chocolate candy coated shell. I mean, look at, yeah, perfect. It's perfect so good. Beach bummer read. So that's, that's my recommendation. Yeah, me too. Like, it's just, I always say it's joy on the page. It's so joyful. And Jess Keating is so talented. And I love everything that she does. So thank you to each of you for sharing a graphic novel. All right, here's the next question is, what are some of your recommendations for a five-year-old? Mm -hmm. So someone in kindergarten, going into kindergarten, what are some books that you're excited about? I'll start first again. I have a daughter who just finished first grade. Oh, right. And, uh, I'll finish it tomorrow. She finishes tomorrow. And she loves funny books. So um, anything, uh, she loves Elephant and Piggy. Anything funny like that by Mo Willems. Um, she loves anything with the pigeon as well, too. Um, she likes books with really vibrant colors, um, books mm -hmm. with lots of repetition as well, too, because we read it and then she'll read it herself during her reading time. Um, I think, you know, it's always about finding what a young reader likes and kind of latching on to that. And like books can, you know, one book will be a gateway to another book and then another book after that. But for us, um, Elephant and Piggy, anything mm -hmm. associated with Mo Willems, we love that and we we devour it. They're yeah. so and funny. The, and it, oh, go ahead, Kelly. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going to say the Krabby books are amazing. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, those are yeah. so funny. Um, I, I love, is it the first one, Hey Krabby? Or it, it, it's fun That's to say that crabby. in a presentation because it sounds like you're accusing someone of being crabby, but mm -hmm. I, I love those as well. Lizette, do you have a recommendation for a five-year-old? I can't help looking at the books behind you. Oh. Um, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> The little butterfly that could. Yeah, okay, because that we're like sharing a brain today because I, I, every book that I'm going to talk about is the one that you do. So yes, please talk about this one. We're here. We're here. Yes, this is by Ross Bierak. It's really about building confidence, and it's like a little spinoff, a little engine that could. So the repetition, the the anxiousness, and working through that, and calming down, and working. So it's such a great read aloud or um, a companion piece to read with a five year old. It's perfect. Uh, I, I love it. So can I add one little thing? Oh, sorry. Can yes, I add please. one little thing about uh, Hello Krabby by Jonathan Finsky? Um, I've had a chance to meet Jonathan before. He's great. I love his books. And what we love about that series is that. They're they're graphic novels. They're just smaller graphic yeah. novels. So yeah. my older daughter, who is in fourth grade, has her graphic novel she loves, and now my first grader has graphic novel she loves as well too. And so they're like reading the same thing, which is which is great. I love. It. And later, Lauren Savage is going to be giving us more recommendations. So out there in Facebook land, if you have questions, please please post them. Oh, one just came. So uh, someone said, "Will you be? Yeah, we'll be talking about uh, books perfect for fourth graders later." So I'm going to save that one for Lauren. Uh, but I'm waiting for some questions to come in. So give me one second from the chat. <laughs> And, and if you guys can see too, because I am a little bit frozen right now. Uh, so here's one. Someone wants to know, Varian, have you written any books for younger readers, like for students, for children in grades one and two? Uh, okay, so I got that. So like, let's just on there. You give me one, like, stay, I will say stay tuned. But I did write a book um, in part of the uh, Who Was What Was series called What Were the Negro Leagues, which is not quite for first grade, but it's certainly be read to second grade, third grade is kind of getting more of that age range. Uh, and I love writing this book. This is my first nonfiction book. And it's about um, uh, these black men who were barred from playing this game that they love. So what they decided to do was form their own teams and form their own leagues um, to play the game of baseball. Um, and so, yeah, this is one of my favorite books to, to do, to research and to write. So maybe not quite first grade, but it certainly you can read parts of it to first grade, the second grade too. But uh, stay soon, 
stay 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 tuned for for more things. <laughs> and I, love, I love how you looked up Lizette. I often ask, "Are you allowed to tell me?" Uh, but that made me so so happy. Okay, here is a question from the audience. Um, what are some engaging questions that parents can ask readers uh, during this summer? So, what are some questions parents can ask their children when they're reading or after they've read a book? Mm. Well, I always go with the question that you love to ask, John, which is, what about this book makes your heart happy? Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yes, because I love was gonna... that question. I love that question. You know, I always remember when you do the conferences, like, this book yeah. makes my heart happy. And goes, <laughs> no, mean, it's true. <laughs> I think to, to, to me, that, that I mean, that's the question I always ask my students. I didn't talk about my background, but I was a third grade teacher for three years, fourth grade teacher for one year, teacher librarian for nine years. And I just always kept all of the questions very, very heart-centered and let, mm -hmm. let my students tell me anything they wanted. I can say, like, I can talk about any book that I haven't read because I can ask questions that allow a child to open up their heart. And Kelly, that's usually the question that I'll ask. So thank you for quoting me, Kelly Yang. <laughs> <laughs> I would also recommend, you know, I loved hearing Varian and um, Kelly's reading memories from the summer. I love that. I think it's a great entry point to introduce to kids. I was um, listening to a podcast on my computer and the uh, picture of Corduroy, the picture book came up and my 13 year old went into a whole thing. Oh my God, I read that book when I was in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. My library teacher read it to me and I remember getting sleepy because it was such a good, and I was like, tell me more. <laughs> so it's a great, so we had a great conversation, but you know, it's also a great way to say, well, why don't we go to the library? Why don't we go to the bookstore um, to find another book that, you know, again, that great, like, okay, let's talk about, reading and sharing that and then like let's let's go pick up more books to talk about yeah i, I love that I love so there's there's a question for kelly and it's coming from aubrey and aubrey is 10 years old in new york and her question for you kelly is what age did you start writing Ooh, well i didn't start writing until first i had to learn english and i didn't learn i didn't know a single word of english when i came to this country and i was like six years old so First, I had to learn English, and that was like a whole other thing. Um, but I would say probably around eight or nine years old is when I started writing. And again, really short pieces, really short. A lot of times, nobody would ever see them. They were just for me. So I really emphasized to kids, you know, write for yourself first. Um, write to enjoy, just like reading, like read to enjoy. You don't have to do it for someone else to impress someone else or for a grade or whatever. Um, learn to love it for yourself first, and then you can share it with others. Perfect. Uh, a question, another question from the audience is, do you have any, what are some books that you have enjoyed reading with your personal children? Ooh. So it can go to mm -hmm. any of you, all three of you. <laughs> I, I have one, I have one. I, okay, um, uh, Dose by Jason Reynolds. My daughter and I read this together. Um, again, you know, Dr. Rudin since Bishop has this this quote attributed to her talk about books being mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. And we love finding books that uh, look like people like us. I think that's very important for young people to see. Also to read about people different than them. In this case, my daughter runs track. Um, she's an African-American girl. And we thought it would be great for her to read this book. So we read it together. And then we could talk about it and have all these fun conversations. But also it was a window and a sliding glass door to a world that's different from hers as well too. And I love that the book can do all these multiple things um, with uh, a young or older reader. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. And, and I want to give a shout out to Look Both Ways as oh, well yeah, yeah. by Jason Reynolds, which I also really, really, oh, man, I love it. Like we're all, we, we didn't plan any of this and we're all coming with the same things. So we have time for one more question. This is a really good question is for a child who loves Magic Treehouse, loves series books, what are some other series that you would mm -hmm. recommend uh, for a fan of the Magic Treehouse? Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and give an answer because I think Christina's Soon Torn Bots series, um, the Ice Princess series, is is one that I always recommend. I love Christina's Soon Torn Bot. <laughs> my yeah. daughter's, my oldest, just finished that series, and my youngest just started the first book today in the series as well too. So yeah, I think they're great. Yeah. Perfect. Do you, Lizette and Kelly, do you have a favorite chapter book series, beginning chapter book series? 
Um, I don't know if it was like beginning, but um, I love reading the boxcar children, and nobody ever talks about the boxcar <laughs> children anymore. I think we should get like a remake or something. But the, it was amazing. I love reading those adventure stories of those kids. But I don't know if it was like uh, uh, considered you know, chap early chapter books. Or yeah, I, I would, I would put it there. And one more, I want to get a shout out to is the Bailey school kids is going to be right. It's going coming out as a graphic yes. novel August. in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I've not read yet, which I'm really, really excited about because I love Bailey school kids. When I was a kid, I think the first book came out in 1990. And so I'm excited for, for a, a new look for them. Yeah. So is that, do you have one? Yeah. I, you know, the classics are, Frog and Toad still stands mm -hmm. at the time. Oh, for yeah. They're, amazing. they're just like a warm hug and mm -hmm. they're full of humor mm -hmm. and friendship. And those books are just pure joy. Like mm -hmm. any age can, can enjoy them. And also, books. like the Mercy Watson. Book. Oh, I love Mercy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, this will be my, my last time. <laughs> like, so like the character Leroy Meeker stands out so much in all of our minds. We recently went on a ski trip. We went to the mountains and there was a ski shop called, it just was called Leroy's. And we could not drive by it without somebody saying, Leroy Meeker was a sneaker. <laughs> oh, I love that. And, and Leroy's trying to find the horse of his heart. I know. <laughs> and I was so happy because all of my kids knew about Leroy Meeker. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So Lizette, Kelly, Varian, thank you so much uh, for sharing your recommendations, for sharing your excitement for summer reading. And now I have to say goodbye to you and I get to bring Lauren to the virtual <laughs> stage. So thank you so, so, so much. Yay. Oh, that was so, so much fun. Hello, Lauren. Hi. Lauren, Lauren is broadcasting from California and she is the co-founder and owner of the Reading Bug Bookstore and Reading Bug Box. And she hosts a wonderful podcast that we're going to be talking about more in a little bit, but I'm gonna turn it over to you now, Lauren. Thank you very much, John. I'm so excited to be talking to you because I've been following you for years and I've never actually talked to you in person. Yay, <laughs> I'm so excited, thank you. So um, guys, you're all here because you know that summer reading is important, but why is it important? So for my customers and my kids who are 12, 10, and five, um, it's been keeping a routine and keeping them inspired and keeping that imagination and creativity flowing throughout the summer months. So routine, um, the word's a bit of a joke this year <laughs> as all of our families have been turned upside down and what routine have we really had? But I urge you to breathe a sigh of relief because now you can find a new summer routine that involves sparking those imaginations and keeping your kids wanting more. And more books, more stories, and most importantly, making it fun. So I have a little thing I'd like to do with you now. So if you'll indulge me for just a second, I'd like you to join me in a really quick little song that we sing in my podcast before every reading bug adventure. So no one can see you, so you can do this with me from home and look as silly as you want. Stretch your arms up way over your heads. And it goes like this. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side. Now we're ready to go. One more time. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> so this is like our little preparation and it's part of my routine um, with my little guy who's five and our story times um, daily at The Reading Bug um, and in our podcast to just get us grounded and ready to read. So now you are all ready and now I'm ready. So hit me, John. Let me unmute my. Sorry, I was I was muted because uh, I was singing Pleasure along singing. with you. I, <laughs> I love that. It's gonna be it's gonna be stuck in my head in a wonderful way for the rest You're of welcome. the day. <laughs> so so you you talked about how you share that in the podcast. So can you talk about the inspiration for your podcast? Why did you start it? And, and what's one of your favorite things about hosting it? Yeah, so we started the podcast just a couple of years ago. And, you know, one thing about books is that we always find that when a kid loves a book, they're always looking for the next thing to go with it. Like, oh my gosh, I love dragons so much, but I've read every dragon book that there is. What can I do now? 
I could listen to a podcast about dragons. So we have a dragon episode. We have um, an episode about every subject the kids are interested in. There's dinosaurs, there's Egypt, there's um, bugs and gardens and outer space. Um, and what we've done with the podcast is put a, a simple story together with music that keeps kids engaged and listening. And um, we've they're 30 minutes long each. Uh, they come out weekly um, on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are heard, you can find us. Um, but the inspiration was really just to keep kids going. Kids want multimedia. They love um, everything about reading already and want more. And that's kind of why we started this podcast. Yay, thank you, thank you. So now we're gonna do like a speed round where <laughs> okay. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna imagine that we are in Lauren's fabulous bookstore and person after person is coming in and asking her for book recommendations. So if you have questions, if you have a specific reader in mind, a specific type of book in mind, please post in the chat and somebody will send those questions to me. But people did submit some ahead of time, so we will start with those. So are you ready, Lauren, for this I'm speed ready. round? Okay. <laughs> All right. And somebody said you have a lovely voice. I oh, agree. That was that was so <laughs> wonderful. Now, do, do you have a background in music? I do. Yeah, I majored in musical theater. Long oh, time. perfect. <laughs> I always say, Lauren, there are two things I know in this world. I know children's literature and I know musical theater. I know so. you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the first question. What are some of your favorite early readers? Okay, so um, I love books that rhyme. Um, so let's start with a couple of picture books. Um, one, I love the um, Koala Who Could, The Lion Inside, and The Squirrels Who Squabbled. Um, those are some of my favorites from, oh gosh, uh, uh, Jim, Jim Bright, Rachel, Rachel Bright, Jim Fields. Um, and then a new one that's coming out this summer that I'm very excited about is Free to Be Elephant Me, which is from the creators of Giraffes Can't Dance. If you guys don't know Giraffes Can't Dance, you have to have it in your library. Um, and I'm sure this one coming up is gonna be just as good. So I'm really excited about that. Um, for other early readers for starting chapter books, um, you guys mentioned the Hello Crabby series and I wanted to explain where that series kind of lies um, in the Scholastic book world um, because it's a whole series of books um, by called the Acorn series. And they are very early, early graphic novels for early readers um, with cute little stories. The Krabby series is great. Um, there's some other ones in there. There's a Hedgehog series. Mm -hmm. And again, finding all these subjects that kids will love. Um, the new one in the Hedgehog series, I think is Let's Go Swimming that's coming out this mm -hmm. summer or just came out this summer. Um, I love those. And just above those, I love the whole Branches series, which is just above Acorn, but um, early chapter books. Um, and my favorites in there, mostly because they're kind of similar to the lines of how we write our podcast on um, the time jumpers, because in our podcast, we always jump back in time and go somewhere. Um, and I love the time jumpers from Branches. I also, I, I love the Acorn series as well and the branches and Layla and the bots is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like are, I, I love the STEM connection to those and, mm -hmm. and the author lives in California like you. Oh, so okay. here, here's a question from the audience. What are some of your uh, favorite uh, books with dragons? Oh, so there's a new dragon book coming out this summer um, from Sayantani Des Desgupta, um, oh, yeah. Force. <laughs> Fourth, is that, did I say Force it? of Fire, yeah, Force, Force of, of Fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have not read it yet, but it looks awesome. It looks very girl power-esque, and I love my girl power books. Um, Girls and Dragons are a really fun mix, so that one looks really good. Awesome, and the next question is, can you please recommend some early chapter books? Yeah, um, so we just mentioned the Br the Branches series. I mean, anything in there. Again, there's a lot of different subjects. Another one in that um, series is the Hero Dog. Um, Oh, help me. What is the little girl's name that wrote those? Um, it's a little girl and her dad who actually wrote the stories, uh, the little early mysteries and she solved. Is it Heidi? I think her name is yes. Heidi. Maybe yes. Heidi, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I love those. Um, I like first mysteries. I think that's really fun. I think it's a great way to get kids engaged in reading. Um, I also like, as far as mysteries go, Ada Lace on the case. Those are really yeah, fun me conference mysteries. Um, what else, what else? Let's think really early, early. Oh, we were talking about Mercy Watson. I just have to say that I love illustrated chapter books. Um, and I 
I, th I wish everything was illustrated because I just love art in general. Um, but um, I just read Mercy Watson to my five-year-old last night for the first time. And he got through the entire thing to the end and he only started humming at the very end. And he hums when he gets bored, but he was like, he was so close to the end. I was so <laughs> impressed that my five-year-old got through this whole early chapter book. Because it's well, just a simple, perfect little story, you know? Yeah, and what I love about those is forever you think about toast with a great deal of butter on it. It's impossible. <laughs> I'm so hungry with the butter and the <laughs> toast, and I really wanted some. But so, so this next question, I think you, you touched upon a little bit, where it says, "What are some of your favorite books written in rhyme?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for sure, um, "Dress Can't Dance" was always my number one favorite, um, and I forgot one in the uh, uh, the Rachel Bright series. Uh, the Worry Saurus is another really great one in that series. Ah, uh, circus ship, anything Chris Van Dusen. I love Chris Van Dusen, especially love his art, which is bright and beautiful and it's great for all ages. They're like, those are my coffee table books. Um, so it's, he's got circus ship, he's got If I Built a Car um, and Randy Riley's big hit. Perfect. The next question is, I have a child who's anxious around dogs. Do you have any book recommendations? This was a cool question because I don't like to hit that subject right on. Um, like, here's a book that's not going to make you scared of dogs. No, I mean, I think you have to go either with empathy or humor or both. So for humor, I would just get the child used to reading books about dogs. And you could even do that with Aaron Blaby's books, the Pig the Pug series. They're hilarious. They're just so funny. And it's just the silly pug always getting in trouble. And he's not nice to his other friend, dog Trevor. And they just get into all sorts of trouble together in each in each story. Um, there's four or five of those, I think. Um, and if you want to go the empathy route, and if this is for a child that might be a little bit older, I just came across a new book by Owen Colfer um, called The Dog Who Lost His Bark. And it's a sweet little bit sad story, um, but it really gives you empathy for this puppy. And maybe that's a way that you could kind of ease your way into loving dogs. I love it. So the next question in the speed round is what are some of your suggestions for a 10 year old who loves fantasy, who loves humor, who loves graphic novels? Mm, um, 10 year old, okay. Uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but I love the Not Enough series for um, graphic novels. Oh, me too, I love those so much. Yeah, they're so good. <laughs> if you're going the fantasy route in graphic novel, I go with, um, I love, I loved Amulet. I know it's a little bit older now, it's been around for a bit, but you haven't started Amulet, I love Yeah, but, but Am, you know, Am, Am, I'm gonna give a shout out for Amulet. So the, the next book, which will be the last book, will hopefully yeah. be coming out soon. But one of my favorite things about being a school librarian was introducing the Amulet series to students in the third grade. And I would say to them, I am so excited that you're in the third grade. And they'd say, well, well, you didn't like us when we were in the second grade. And I'd say, no, 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 no. Because third grade is when I introduced my favorite graphic novel series, Amulet. And we always had in the library multiple copies of Amulet. We'd have like six, seven copies. Yep. And is what I would do is if books one through five were out or one through six were out, I'd have stacks of them for each of the third grade classes. And I, I would book talk the series and I'd say, who wants to check out all six books? And they'd say, no, no, no. I just want to check out the first one. I'd say, no, 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 you're going to thank me tomorrow because when you get to the end of the first book, you're going to want Amulet book two. And when you get to the end of the second book, you're going to want three. So I have seen dormant reader after dormant reader become an avid reader because of the Amulet series. And I have kids who are now just graduating from college who are no longer kids, former students who will still read the Amulet series. So I'm so grateful you said Amulet. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think, you know, and, and it's one that really kind of transcends a lot of ages. And I think a lot of books do. I think we kind of get stuck with that recommendation on the back, too. Right. So it's I mean, I there you really have to know what you're talking about. But but you're right. They're great. That's it. <laughs> oh, they're so good. I'm so grateful you said that. So the, the next question is, what are some books you'd recommend to a child who loves action and history? Oh, anything. And I don't know if they're old enough for it yet. Alan Gratz. Oh, um, so uh, the new one uh, about 9-11 that just came out is incredible. Um, and uh, Refugee, um, they're, they're really, I, th I think 10 plus, um, but they're great historical fiction. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I, I have Ground Zero, Alan's mm. latest book on display behind me. His books are always, re they're riveting, they're relevant. Um, you, you have to clear an entire day in your schedule because you know you're not going to be able to put down an Alan Gratz book. Mm. All right, so the next question, oh, this is a great question is, can you please recommend some nonfiction books for a five to 10 year old boys? Ooh, so, you know, what I tend to see in the bookstore a lot is that kids love, especially boys, love books about facts, um, any of the record books, um, you know, and any subject they like, you should just get them a book about it. Um, I mean, there's, I know a lot, little, little bit more historical fiction than I can actually name um, the nonfiction, but gosh, you give me a subject and I will send you a list um, for sure. <laughs> I, I can't remember solid names of nonfiction. It's kind of hard, but um, do email me really um, contact at the and, you know, tell me you, you know, you want to learn more about unicorns and I will give you a whole list of them. Yeah, and I'm going to share, a, oh, I, I got rid of it. Yeah, it's here. This is one that's available at Scholastic Book Fairs. It's called Sea Bunnies. Ooh. And it's a, it's a nonfiction book that I, well, I love as an adult, but I would have especially loved as a child. I loved Guinness Book of World Records. I loved Ripley's Believe It or Not. I loved any nonfiction book as a child where I could turn to the middle and I could read to the front or I could start at the end and read to the front where each section you know is independent of itself so i love 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 this book sea bunnies and then also jess keating's nonfiction books we mentioned jess keating earlier with bun bun and bon bon uh, she has a dr glider series with scholastic that's really really wonderful as well all right so do you have uh, do you have a favorite dinosaur or shark book <laughs> Ooh. ah uh... Okay, uh, Nugget and Fang is a great shark fiction picture book. It's really funny, really cute. Um, dinosaur. Um, <laughs> my favorite dinosaur book is not at all about dinosaurs, but it's called The Dinosaur on the 13th Floor. And it's a picture book. They actually find the dinosaur on the 13th floor in the end, but the whole thing is about animals leading up to it. It's really cute. Um, there's tons of great dinosaur nonfiction too, for sure. Uh, let's see if I can remember any names. A lot of them are well, just- Well, I have, I have one by, I might not get it correctly, there's one by Mike Lowry, L O W E R Y. Yeah, he has a shark he has, one too. yeah, I think he has a dinosaur and a yes, shark. A so and shark both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are great. And he's got a new one coming fall too. I think I just saw. Oh, what is it called? Um, somebody, oh, space. Somebody just helped us out. There's one it's coming everything about. Shark, everything awesome. Everything awesome dinos and everything awesome sharks. <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. Like I could see, I'm very visual, so I could see the cover. Like I, I loved. Like a lot of like people say, oh, I don't like when people come to the bookstore and say, do you know that it's a red cover and it has blue font? I loved those questions as a librarian you because totally normally I can take them right to the book. Yeah. <laughs> no, the cover that... of Mike Lowry stuff is is crazy visual. He's got so much going on on those pages, and they're so full of information too. Yeah, I love that. All right, so if somebody came to the bookstore and they said, okay, Lauren, like, what is the book that you're most excited about? Like, if you could just give this book, if you could truly give them away, like anybody that came to the bookstore, they would always leave with this book. What, what is a book, right? Like a recently released book or forthcoming book that you would want everyone in your bookstore to know about? Let's see, okay. I know that's right. a hard question. Really, I know, that there's so many. So I'm just, I'm staring at all the books in the store. Um, <laughs> Okay, okay. I think I have to go back to my Rachel Bright books because I really love them because they're just so great and powerful. Um, I think The Lion Inside has to be it. It's my number one book. It's been my number one book for two years. It's not brand new, but it doesn't matter. You still have to have it. There's a lion and a mouse and the mouse really wants to have a roar. And if she can't get it, you know, it's, it's she's, she's, she's not gonna be important. And the lion and the mouse become friends in the end and learn, she learns how to roar. It's just, it's a lovely story. Oh, I, that's perfect. That, that is, that's a book of your heart, a book that you want everyone's heart to know about. So more questions from the audience. We have a few more minutes and while we're waiting for more questions, I'm gonna share a book uh, that I'm excited about right now called My Very Favorite Book in the Whole Wide World. I, I love book talking this book with students because I can say, I'm gonna tell you about my very favorite book in the whole wide world. And I love Melka Mitchell because in addition to being a Super Bowl champion, Melka Mitchell, the author of this book, is a literacy crusader. And he bases the main character, Henley, on himself when he was a child, as a child who struggled as a reader, who didn't identify 
as a reader. And one day, Henley's teacher, Mrs. Joy, says, tomorrow, I want you to bring your very favorite book in the whole wide world to school. It can be a book about anything. It just has to be a book that you love with your whole heart. And Henley gets very, very anxious because again, he doesn't identify as a reader, but he goes on a journey to discover what his very favorite book in the whole wide world is. And in order to find out, you have to pick up a copy from your favorite independent bookshop. So I wanna share that one. And then one more book that I love right now is Wishes. Oh, so so this would be the book, like if, if you had asked me the question about if they came to my bookstore, my library, what's a book that I'd want everyone to leave with? It would be this picture book, Wishes. I think it has 76 words and all 76 words do so much and it's poignant and it's beautiful and the paper smells really, really good. And it's a book that I think every classroom library should have and every school library should have. All right, we have more questions. So um, let's see here. I, oh, good. Oh, so what are some uh, good resources? What are some of your favorite online resources that recommend books? Hmm. You know, let's see. I mean, I'm going to say your podcast. I'm going to say your podcast is one. Brilliant, John. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's true. we do a lot of research on the on the subjects beforehand, and we do have on on our page on thereadingbug.com slash adventures. You can find all the books that are in the Reading Bugs book bag. So, um, for example, if you look at our dragon episode and you want to learn more about dragons, you can click on that, and all the books about dragons that we know or that we mentioned in the episode will come up. Um, so that's a really fun way to find things out. I mean, and then, I mean, definitely go to Scholastic's website, obviously. I'm sure John will tell you a lot more about that. There's plenty of information about ages and what to read next. Um, and, um, you know, I, um, I, I meet with my book reps all the time and I'm always asking them questions. So if you guys have questions for me and you need more suggestions, you can always email me at contact at thereadingbug.com. Yay! All right, this is the last question that just came in and I'll answer it as well. It says, if you were stranded on an island, what book would you want with you? Charlotte. Give me from any time in, oh, yes. I just have to. I mean, Charlotte's Web was my number one. Talk about remembering about reading aloud with my parents. It's the one book I solidly remember sitting in this old brown chair in my house reading with my mom aloud. And I think I've read it. It's one of the only books that I've read more than two times. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's a book like I had in all of my school visits for the past four years, because I, I talk to students about how reading is a workout for your heart. And I talk about how like I really discovered that in the second grade, because Miss Valinder, my second grade teacher, read Charlotte's Web to us. And it was the first time I saw a teacher cry because of a story. And that was so that was so profound. And it, it showed me in such a human way, like how stories really do connect us and how stories, you know, uh, affect our hearts. So that was the perfect one. I'm going to say the same book. So thank you. Thank you. So Lauren, I can't believe we're, we're done with the speed round. I give I you, know, an a it. <laughs> <laughs> I give you, I give you an A plus plus, and thank now I'm going to let you take a little break. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, so I cannot believe our time is up for the evening. I've been lucky enough to be at all of these wonderful family parent events. I'm so grateful to everyone who joined us today. I'm grateful for all of the panelists. And now I have some closing information for you. You can learn more about summer reading events at scholastic.com summer. Lauren mentioned that a moment ago. And many of the independent bookshops have summer reading programs and events. They also have a lot of wonderful digital swag and in-person swag that you can get on a first come first serve basis. So make sure that you go to scholastic.com slash scholastic parents night for all of the all of the swag and all of the book lists and many of the things that we mentioned throughout today's program. Thank you again to all of the independent bookstores who partnered for this wonderful evening, the libraries, the community organizations that help spread the word, and all of you parents and caretakers, teachers, librarians, book lovers who attended. And I have to give a humongous 
biggest heartfelt thank you to Shara and Alex and Colin, who are doing everything behind the scenes to make sure that these events can take place and for all of their preparation. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful summer. And as always, happy, happy reading. And again, thank you to Varian, Lizette, Kelly, Lauren, Shara, Colin, and Alex. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.